picture this. A teenage girl arrested for dancing inspires other women to follow in her footsteps. It's a real-life version of Footloose taking place in Iran, but it's as serious as it gets. It started with the arrest of 18-year-old gymnast Maed Hojabri after she uploaded videos like this one of her dancing in a room on Instagram. That angered Iran's clerical establishment, which had her arrested and put on state television, making a tearful confession about her behavior. Hojabri's persecution has spurred outrage both within and outside Iran, and it's also spurred other Iranian women and men to post on social media their own dancing clips in a show of defiance and support. Well, joining us now from Washington is Negor, Negor Matazor, Mortazavi, a journalist for Iran International. And Negor, this issue is how serious is it, uh, especially when we're seeing other instances of women in Iran pushing back against the government, for example, on the wearing of the hijab? Um, well, it is serious. It's part of a bigger movement that is, quite frankly, not new. It's been going on, I would say, since the inception of the Islamic Republic, when the mandatory hijab rules and its extensions, which is a ban on women singing in solo in public, women dancing, and also the way women dress and men and women mingle, all of this package has been uh, pushed back by portions of the population for the past four decades. But I think there's a new new uh, wave or a new format which has been combined with the cyberspace, especially um, with networks like Instagram, because these young people can immediately upload images, videos, or photos from their private sphere onto the public sphere, which makes it so much more complicated for the government to crack down, because the crackdown has been mostly focused on the public sphere, but now all of a sudden a girl dancing in her bedroom uh, can be posted on public sphere to more than half a million followers, which is what she had. And that was actually one of the reasons she was singled out, her and a few others, because of the large number of followings. And I think this has created a big challenge for at least the hardline part of the establishment. And it's, it has also created backlash, not within the society, but within the government and the political establishment itself. You have um, people protesting from members of parliament to former government officials or um, at least the reformists or moderate camp politicians who are saying this type of treatment and crackdown um, is just crossing a line and is too um, severe. So with that concern uh, that you lay out from the government towards uh, social media, towards this ability you describe of any average Iranian to broadcast their thoughts uh, out to the world, how is the government reacting, reacting to all those men and women saying, no, we're going to stand up for that right and dancing in public and posting it online? Well, that's the extension of the challenge that has been created because there's no way that the government can go and arrest every single person who's posting on Instagram, which is a very high number of the youth um, in Iran these days. That's why they've singled out the famous ones or the more popular ones, Maida Hojabi, that you named, the teenager, had over half a million followers and she was considered an Instagram celebrity, basically. So by singling out um, these, um, these cases, as, as we've seen with previous experiences with the government, it's basically a way to send a message to everyone else that you might not have been arrested yet, but this is how we can crack down um, on what we see as a crime. But then at the same time, the treatment of her, not just the arrest, but also the confession, the televised interrogation, basically, on public television, on state television, is what has caused the outcry, and so many people are just posting in solidarity with her now. Nagar, we've heard for decades already that there exists in Iran a, a public sphere and a private sphere that are almost completely diametrically opposed to each other, especially when it comes to women, and that uh, basically this arrangement has existed since the revolution. Is this a sign that that, may f that arrangement, may social arrangement, may finally be breaking down, perhaps because, as you mentioned, of the new technologies like Instagram? 
I think so. Like I said, this has been changing slowly. Maybe um, it was less severe right after the revolution or the crackdown was actually more serious and more successful uh, after the Iranian revolution with the banning of satellite television, with the banning of certain uh, media products or films or whatever, music from outside the world. But now with, with this type of online access and technology, a vast majority of Iranians, the mainstream Iranians, have access to satellite television, they have access to social media, and they can post their own stuff on social media, which, like I said, has created a main challenge. But then at the same time, they have pushed the government back. So the crackdown um, at some point has become so challenging that, like I said, there's no way they can um, arrest or crack down on every single person. But every once in a while, they single out one case to basically scare off a larger group of people, but it just seems like the youth are not um, getting pushed back, but then at the same time, this backlash seems like they're pushing the boundaries even further. Nagar, well, Iran is no stranger to protests, and those include social protests. We've seen those in the past over the wearing of the hijab. Did those manage to actually gain traction over time to make any concrete change in Iran, or was it just a wave that sort of faded away? No, I think there has been concrete change. There hasn't been actual change in the law and actual um, uh, writing of the law, maybe, since the beginning of the revolution and the mandatory hijab and, uh, and other things that have been limited. But in the enforcement of the law, there has definitely been changes, meaning the pushback by the population has been so hard that if you just look at photos and videos of women in Iran from the 80s or the 90s and compare them to the, uh, today, you can't. You, you can see a major difference. The uh, pants have gotten tighter. The skirts have gotten shorter. The scarves keep going further. In certain parts and major cities in Iran, um, there's a fine for actually driving without a scarf, which means a lot of people are actually doing it. They get into a car, women, they just drop their hijab and start driving. So it seems like the pushback has um, created more space for women and men, and also the government has. Uh, taken little steps back over the years. But then at the same time, uh, the crackdown has also stayed in place, and there's this push and pull that's constantly happening by the population sounds and the like, establishment. Sounds like a change very, very slowly but surely happening. And a big question, how long the Iranian regime can actually try to stop it like it did uh, with this teen 